to come down here to the broadcast studio. But every time we come down here uh, to the broadcast studio, we're at the mercy of their internet. So, which is really, really, really a problem. That's one of the reasons why we got the new office space. And I, I, I should, have, should have taken the time to just go out to the office and broadcast from there. But um, we're going to try and make it through this. Can y'all see it and hear me now? Can everyone still see and hear me? Yeah, yes. I can hear you. We can see your screen. All right, cool. All right. Back to what we were saying, okay, apparently what's going on is, you know, it, it, the industry is set up to really not trust new on operators, regardless of how much time you have behind the wheel as a, as a company driver or a lease driver. They don't, they don't take that into consideration, okay. Now, what I feel like they should do is they should go start thinking a little bit further. Don't just look at how old the MC number is. They should actually go back and check their entire career history as a as a truck driver on the company time. Go back and see because we have some owner operators who come into the industry and they get their um, their MC numbers and they uh, get their authority, but they were driving sometimes five, ten, you know, some even longer than that as a company driver or a lease driver before they even became an owner operator. So is that person who has three years driving for Covenant or, or Trans World or whoever he's driving for, does that not count as time behind the wheel? In actuality, it does, but the industry does not give them credit for that. And that is unfortunate and it is unfair. So what are some of the solutions as an owner of business manager? Because it, it's our job to do what? To make sure that we keep our carriers and owner operators moving, make sure we find them business back and make sure that they are paid properly and therefore we can get paid as well. We can earn our keep. So what are some of the suggestions? Anybody have a suggestion on how how we can overcome that? Does anybody want to offer some suggestions on how we can overcome that? Uh, I mean, so we've got about uh, getting re- having the uh, owner operator get re- references. Yeah, references. Okay, so having owner operators get references. So, um, so what you're saying is, uh, get references from some of your your old employers or your old employer who you drove for uh, for a number of years. Those type of references. What other type of references will suffice for a shipper though? Because, you, cause, I mean, you can get references, but, but, but you got to have references that are industry-related. Does, does everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay. Now, what is, so any other, because not everybody can get those references. Like, can get those references. Because you may have not, I mean, there are a lot of cases where the owner operator hasn't been driving that long. I only drove for eight months with a company before I went and bought my own truck. But I had no problem getting freight, even when I was picking my own freight. Okay, so I'm going to give you all a suggestion here. Mm-hmm. And this is the thing that you all need to discuss with your own operators. When, when you find out that they're new and, 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 and if they're having problems finding freight. Now, now, if you're not having problems getting broken on with them, that's fine. But if you're having problems like this seems to be a problem, here is a surefire way to overcome that. All right. Have any of you ever heard of owner operators leasing their, their truck that they own onto a company? You've heard of that, right? Yep. 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 Okay. So wouldn't it be prudent and what could solve that problem is to have your new owner operator who has an MC number, who has his own truck, who's got all of the insurance and everything, to go to a company like Landstar and say, hey, I want to sign on with you guys as an owner-operator, but Landstar, but a lot of people are saying, well, Landstar doesn't take, you know, new owner-operators. They want someone who sees it, right? But there are plenty of companies that do. Like, and, and, and here's the thing that, that you all have to, have to try and get across to your owner-operator. Swift has an owner-operator 
I'm programmed, and they'll take you, <laughs> you know, you really don't have to have a whole lot of time driving behind the wheel if you got your own truck to sign on with Swift. Now, does Swift have a uh, kind of questionable name? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of negative stuff that may be associated uh, with them, and companies like Western Express, and companies like, you know, there's a whole bunch of companies out there that would take new on offerings. And you can lease your truck onto them. Because I chose Western Express not because of the name, not because of their reputation, because they don't have a good reputation. They have a pretty, sh- <laughs> I'm not going to say what I want to say, but let's just say shoddy. <laughs> they have a very, a pretty shoddy rep, uh, a, a, a shoddy rep, okay? But, but, but they have a kick ass on the op program. They're on our program, basically, uh, you come in, all you needed was six months behind the wheel. If you had six months behind the wheel and you're on your truck, you can come on over there. They're on our program. Okay? So you go into that, they're on our program. Don't worry about the, the name of the company or how bad they are or whatever the case may be, because you are on the operator. You're not a company driver. You're not being paid the way the company drivers are, and you're not being dispatched the way the company drivers are, because their owner-op program allows their owner-ops to find 100% of their own loads if they choose to. So the key is, find your company that you can lease on to that's been in the business for a while, because their authority and MC number has a lot more clout than yours do. Does that, does that make sense? I'm to everyone. Yes. Okay. Then that would effectively solve that problem. Now, some of you are probably saying, yeah, but some of these companies don't man the cabin. They just think, ah, oh, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want my name associated with Hold up. I didn't say make it your career with that company. I said sign on with them so you should start getting at least a minimum of what? 73 and a third percent of the low fee. Because some of these companies that you lease on to, they pay anywhere from 75 to 30 percent, like, like what's the express be, and they kept the other 27.2 percent or whatever the case may be, or 0.7 percent, or, 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 or whatever the case may be. But some pay as high as 90 percent to an operator. So you just kind of go through them, and, and, and there's a whole bunch of them that are hanging around that 80 percent down to 75 percent. So if the 75 percent of a low fee, of, of, of low fees on consistent freight and decent freight, better than a hundred percent of no loads or loads that have lousy rates. Don't y'all think that's better? That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. How do I know? Because I did it. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was new, fresh. I knew that my MC number didn't have a whole, whole lot of you know, time on it. But I only drove for eight months with, um, with Covenant before I went and bought my own truck. But I knew that if I tried to jump out there under my own name, RBBS Transport, guess what? It's going to be rough and tough for me to really find loads. Okay, but so I started looking around for a company. Now, can you lease your truck onto a smaller company if you don't like the big companies' reps and like the hell? Of course you can. There's a, a bunch of smaller on operator um, operations, right? That you can lease up to. Now the question is, how do you find those, right? They don't know. So, well, that's great, Kevin, but how do I find those smaller companies, right? Guess what? Anybody got a suggestion? Because cause, cause you can find them right where? In our back office tools and resources, right? Does anybody want to give me, you know, some guidance on where to find this within our back office tools and resources? Smaller? On an operating company that you may want to want to um, contact and lease your truck onto. Universal is one. Yeah, that's one way. 
but where can you find them in your back office? Using the tools and resources you already have access to. Start thinking about what our tools and resources are. And see if you can tell me where, what the best place we can find on our operators, small, size of our operator um, companies that you can lease your truck onto. QPS. Where? Quality Transport. Lucy. There you go. Now somebody's using their head. <laughs> All right. <laughs> somebody's using their head. <laughs> so, um, if we go over here to this Quality Transport Solutions or, or Quick Transport um, Solutions. Um, that's what it really is right there. Quick Transport Solutions. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to go to Quick Transport um, Solutions. We're going to click on it. We're going to go over to where we are. We're going to go over here to our resources, right? Or you can just go to trucking companies. But we go over here um, to the resources. So what we're looking for is these smaller trucking companies, right? Search trucking companies over in the red section. So it says search trucking companies. We're going to click on that right there. And we are going to look for, and you can look for them by state. If you live in Florida, if you want to, if you want to look for someone who is in Florida, because obviously you probably want someone who has a terminal that's where? Close to your home, right? Yes, sir. Exactly. Go over there. You think, I live in Florida. I want to find me a company that's in Florida. Now you want to look for a company that, that has what? Not too many trucks. You don't want to go too big, right? You want to start off with a smaller company. But that smaller company has been invisible. Wow, right? Mm -hmm. And any company that's been invisible for a while is gonna is gonna have what? More than five trucks. There you go. More than five trucks. <laughs> I say, so you don't just jump out there new to this and all of a sudden you got more money to buy yourself six to ten trucks, do you? <laughs> no. You are not one of the guys that have been in business for at least a little while. Why? Because so you're going to hit that six to ten trucks, right? They hit that six to ten trucks. And you're going to look for what? Interstate because you want to run, right? Then you know, search and see what we got in Florida. Let's see what that yields us in Florida. What that prospect pool looks like here in Florida. That prospect pool has 731 trucking companies that own six to ten trucks that are interstate. I'm certified. Look. Trucking companies, right? This one right there has nine trucks, nine drivers. That's right there on Thomas Beer Road. I know where that is. That's in Tallahassee. <laughs> so that would be an ideal one for me to contact, right? <laughs> no, chances are, and they're called One Hour Signs Incorporated, but they probably do other stuff. But chances are, or they probably have a bunch of dedicated runs because they make these big signs, so they're probably loading their trucks up with what? These signs to be delivered, right? Right. So chances are that would be a good one. Why? Because they, they, they have a, they have a built-in system where they kind of supply their own loads. Hmm. <laughs> that makes it, that, that makes for a good little working um, relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. What I'm, what, what I'm getting at is this. Okay, this whole thing is getting at this. You all have a wealth of tools and resources. Okay, I need y'all to start looking at everything you have and look at it from a different standpoint. Don't just look at it for for, for face value. Okay. Um, when I put together this, this back office site, all these tools and resources now. I'm not saying that I pay for all the stuff that we have access to, but what I have done is I researched enough to find things that can pretty much help you solve any problem you are facing. 
And that's where the value of the tools and resources really come into play. Okay? And our job, my job, my job is to show you all how to use these things or how to train you all to look at what you have with a different eye. Okay? And with a different mindset. Because now you all are not, you're not working for someone. You're working for yourself. And on top of that, your, your job as a business manager is to manage. Okay? You have to manage. You have to educate. You have to, you know, influence your own operators. And you have to help them solve problems. This is how you get from starting out with, you know, five or six carriers that you got signed on to 317. Like, we are people have to say, yeah, how did you get 317 carriers? A lot of hard work. <laughs> but I got it. And this is how I did it. Because you have to, you really have to take your, your title serious and to heart. You, the reason why we change the name of what we do, or why we're trying to get this new name out there, because you all are not dispatchers. All dispatchers do, they find those, they here you go, take that and run it. That's a dispatcher. That's not what you all do. And, that's, and, 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 and what you all are, what we are, we are business managers. We are on our business manager in every sense of the word. That's who we are. And that's what a lot of the other freight broker trainers and brokers and stuff, they come on and they come on YouTube. I had a guy on YouTube last night. So what you're doing is you're training people how to devil broker. No, but they're not broken. How can you devil broker when you're not a broker? Don't. Hold my peace, Calvin. Peace be still. <laughs> peace be still. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you got a lot of ignorant people out there, and I know they're just doing it just to try and, you know, to get a rise out of me or whatever this is that, but that's okay, because sometimes I take that and I turn it around on them and turn it into a teachable moment. Mm-hmm. Okay, you, you, have to, you, have to, you, have to, you have to turn it around and you have to teach it into a teachable moment. And then that does two things of someone who's trying to criticize what you're doing. You, you've accomplished showing them that, uh, first of all, you're on a whole different level than they are. Second of all, you know more about this industry than they do. Third of all, you are more professional than they are. And then you turn around and do something that's totally, that they totally did not expect. You offer to help them. Now, does that not make a person feel that much smaller? Therein lies the key to our success. But what I need you all to start doing is start recognizing that your back office, your back office tools and resources, they really do have all the, all the answers to whatever problem you, um, you all have, it is lies, the answer lies in your back office tools and resources. Because before we talk about this, a lot of you all were saying, well, you know, the only thing I can do with these guys is, you know, not much I can do with them, right? But now you have a viable way if you can teach them, right, and show them how it's going to be better for them to lease their truck on to someone and run underneath their authority, right, until you get that seasoning on your, what's it called? Because you can still use your authority, but you're just running under someone else's authority. Because when I was running with, um, with Western Express, when I leased my truck on to Western Express, guess what I leased it on as? Not Calvin Butler, but as what? Can anybody guess? Come on now, somebody talk to me. RBPS. Exactly. I leased my truck onto them under the name of RBBS Transport LLC. My EIN number, my LLC, um, you know, 
uh, incorporation papers. I turned all of that into this. So when they, so when they cut my checks, my settlement checks, because they're not regular paychecks, they're called settlement checks. When they cut my settlement check, guess what? That became like money in the bank. Now, now for those of you that say, man, hey, Cam, you ain't never made no, no on off stuff. This is, you, ain't never, you ain't never make no good money. Uh, let's see, I, 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 I used to have copies of, of my settlement checks. Let's see if I can find them. Uh, the show and tell here. <laughs> show, show and tell. That's the game we play when I want to. And we're talking about that song. Y'all know about that. Baby. Maybe, brother, sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking back? <laughs> Y'all remember that? <laughs> uh, let's see if I can find that. Uh, oh, I know where I can find it. I, I know where I can find it. It's in my email, I think. I think it's in my email. It might be on my other computer, but I think it's in my email. So I had to supply a bunch of that stuff for the mortgage broker when we were buying our home. So let's see if I can find it there. Uh, where are we at? We, uh, we're here, right? Yeah, we're here. Let's see if I can find it there. Let's go and see if I can find it there. Uh, we're looking at WEB, Web, uh, one and one Let's go to my email. RBBS training. I might be able to find it. I might be able to find it. Let's see here. Uh, but I know it, it's on my other computer um, is where it is, and I'm pretty sure I got it in the cloud somewhere. Oh, I know where it, I know where it most definitely is. Uh, oh, hold on. Let's try this. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, my. Mortgage broker. Michelle Nichols. Your loan is approved with intention. Okay, I got that part. Oh, shoot. I'm trying to think what's the best place I can find this at because I got so much stuff. Movement mortgage application. But anyway, I'll, I'll continue to try to look for it, but let's see if I can, if I can give y'all some teachable stuff here at the same time. Um, um, you know, one of the, like I said, um, your job, hold on here. <laughs> It's kind of hard to do two things at the same time. I, I'm, it seems like the, I'm doing it. I have a quick question for you, Calvin. Yeah, go ahead. That'll, uh, um, as an owner keep up, you occupied. As an owner of our um, manager, um, with us having our own authority, do we have to have some type of um, insurance? The owner operator themselves? No, no. Well, us as the owner operator business manager. Um, and we no. Have our own no, you don't need insurance. Not as a business manager, no. Okay, all we're providing is the um, is the authority. Because remember, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You, I, I think you're confused because you're definitely confusing me uh, um, at this point. Um, are you talking about you as the the authority owner who companies are, are leasing on? To your trucking company? Or are you talking about you as an owner or business manager? Yeah, me as an owner or business manager getting my own authority. Um, do I have all right. to have insurance? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. If you if you if you're getting your own authority, okay, and you are going to lease trucks on to your trucking company, because that's what you are. You, you're no longer an owner or business manager if you got your authority. You understand know what I'm saying? Okay. And all the uh, business manager is a is an independent dispatcher. You get that? Yes. All right. So, as an independent dispatcher slash on the uh, business manager, so that's what that uh, that's what that is. Now, if you're gonna go out and get your authority and start your own trucking company, you are a trucking company. Does everybody understand that? Okay, got it.
Does everybody understand that? Understood. Yes. Okay. So that's a separate thing. Okay. You you are an all our business manager, which means you are finding loads for other carriers, right? And you're booking them freight. But if you have your own trucking authority, all you're doing is you just got your trucking authority, which you gotta have what? Your insurance. If you're gonna leave trucks on, right? You gotta have that. You gotta have, you're gonna have that. You're gonna have that. Going to have to have insurance. You are probably going to have to own one truck. Now, I, I've talked to you all about how you can do that. Does anybody remember how I suggest you go about getting getting your one truck without you spending any money and getting your insurance on it? Does anybody remember how I suggest you all do that? Your first carrier that signs on to run with you can ask them to partner with you. Look at that. Somebody paying attention. <laughs> What's your name? Miss Ernest. Miss Ernest. I said, I, I told you you was going to be good at this, right? <laughs> I, I, I did tell you that. <laughs> okay. And look, Miss, Miss Ernest is exactly right. And you not too long ago just started with us, right? Last month. Last month. All right. Look. Y'all been listening to her. All right. Ms. Ernest says that what you want to do if you're um, getting your authority and you want to be a trucking company, so this is falls under our video that talks about how to own a, how to start your own trucking company without owning any trucks. Okay? And this is how you do it. As she mentioned, you want to partner. You want to take your first two or three people who contact you about signing on their truck with you. All right? And you... Make an offer to maybe the first two of them and say, look, or just one of them. All you need is one. Say, hey, look, I need a truck under the business name, okay, because I need to have the insurance. And in order to have insurance, i got to have a truck to put insurance on, right? So I can do a blanket insurance policy so I can add the other trucks that come on, you know, people who want to lease their trucks that they own onto our authority. Not meaning that I've got insurance on all those trucks, it's just you got a blanket policy that covers any truck that may get in an accident. You understand what I'm saying? Does everybody understand what a blanket policy is? Yes, yes it, it's like an umbrella that covers anything. Okay. It, 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 it doesn't mean you got to have insurance. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Now that doesn't mean that you got to have uh, $800,000 insurance or meat insurance on, on this truck, on that truck, on this truck, on that truck, or several policies. No, you got one policy. Because the chances of five of your trucks getting into an accident at the same time <laughs> are highly unlikely, right? That's highly unlikely. So that's why they have what's called a blanket policy. Now, does that mean that the owner operator? Does not need insurance? Anybody? They they need to keep their insurance. Exactly. They need to keep their individual insurance on their truck because they got to have that to, to do what? To operate and drive their truck, right? Right. FCSA. Exactly. So your blanket policy is just your company insurance that will cover anybody who is in an accident at that particular given time. But each truck, each owner operator has their own insurance also that will cover stuff outside of whatever happens within your, your company rent. Okay? Now, what you do is, when your first person comes on and says to them, say, hey, I need a truck that I can put insurance on so that I can be legal as a trucking company. Okay? Uh, I've been willing to offer you a partnership. It'll be a limited partnership. If you will become the partner uh, within the company, I will give you all your loads and you'll get 95% of the load fees of your loads. And I just take 5%. With everyone else, I might be taking 27%. Or thirty percent, paying them seventy, I'm taking thirty, paying them eighty, I'm taking twenty, whatever. But you would get ninety five percent, okay. And on top of that, 
I'm going to give you 1% of the low fees from all the other trucks that are within our company. Or 2% or 3%, or you may say 5%. You see what I'm saying? To make up that for that what? That other 5% he's not getting on the loads that he runs, but instead he's getting an additional 5% on all the other loads. So if you're charging everyone else, if you're getting um, 30%, Right? That means you're not going to be cut down to what? 25%. He's going to get 5%. And he gets 95% of the all his all his rents. Is that not a sweet deal? Yes, it is. Anybody? Is that not a sweet deal? Yes, it is. Okay. That's a sweet deal now. So now... He they, they come down, he's in a position to uh, uh, do what? Make money without even running. Right? And all he had to do was come on as your partner, because if he's your partner and he's on the articles of the corporation, that means his truck is now what? A company vehicle. Right? Right. And now you can use that truck to do what? That insurance on it. You got your blanket policy. You're in business. Let's go and lease and own some owner house. <laughs> I feel good. Da, na, 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 na. Like I knew that I shouldn't now. Y'all didn't know I was. Y'all didn't know I was an entertainer. I see. But anyway, <laughs> you got that James Brown. You don't feel like that James Brown right about now, man. Because look, when you start, look, look, y'all, <laughs> look, y'all. When y'all start uh, thinking like an entrepreneur, <laughs> boy, look at here. It's like a brand new day. <laughs> like Mr. Rogers said, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood, won't you be mine? <laughs> okay? I ain't Tom Hanks, but I know Mr. Rogers. <laughs> all right, look. <laughs> look, all I'm saying is this. Train yourselves to look at things in a wider perspective. Become innovators. Okay, and for those people out there who do not understand our platform, Yes, our platform teaches you some things about trucking, teaches you some things about dispatching, teach, yeah, it does teach you some things about brokering, and we provide you with tools and resources and a network and all that type of stuff, blah, 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 blah. But is that the, the only thing that we do? No. What we do is we are training you all how to be logistic entrepreneurs. My goal is to train you all how to think differently, how to change your perspective on how you can earn money within this, this industry. And if you can, can innovate, if you can come up with fresh ways of doing things and ways of offering your clientele solutions, there is no limit to how much money you can make in this industry. Do you all agree with that? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, because that's my goal every Saturday. Because during the week, we train y'all on the mundane stuff. How to find loads in the back office, how to operate load boards, how to use your, uh, on your straight uh, dispatch. But your Saturday broadcast is more about teaching you all how to be what? Entrepreneurs. Logistic entrepreneurs. Okay? And, 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 you know, I like that because I'm telling you, it was a. <laughs> My life changed when I started thinking like an entrepreneur and not like a, an employee. And I guarantee you, once you get on that level, you never want you never want you, you are never going to want to go back to thinking like an employee. And not only that, so many opportunities just open up for you. Opportunities you 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 just didn't know were around you, which they were around you all the time, but you didn't have the good sense to take advantage of those opportunities. But when you start looking through the eye of, a, of an entrepreneur, 
you begin to recognize and see everything that's going on around you for what it is. It's an opportunity. Now the question is, am I prepared to take advantage of that opportunity? And if I'm not prepared, how do I get prepared to take advantage of that opportunity? Okay? All right. Pa, 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 pa. Uh, there is the, that's the, um, 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 the lesson for today. <laughs> now, let's have some, some Q&A. Uh, uh, um, and first of all, did y'all learn something? Let's, let's, let's find that out first. For people say that I don't teach nothing. Did, <laughs> did y'all learn something? Yes. Yes. All right. Great, great, great. Did today's uh, show was a success. Now, Q and A. What questions do y'all have that y'all have been wanting to get some uh, clarification on, or, or some answers on, or some things that you were wondering about, or you know, just things that your carriers have brought up to you? Let's see if we can give y'all a good Q and A session. It's about eleven twenty. And we're gonna run this all up until about twelve thirty. So we got an hour of Q and A. Let's get started. Okay, Cal, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. I um I met a guy, he owner actually, he owned a company and he actually gave me we were sit down and he gave me access to his um central uh central dispatch okay and you know I, I told him how i could make money using um you ship but he did, he was saying man he never heard of it so he was kind of skeptical about it you know um what what mm -hmm. how do you think i should really address it because he was saying that he don't think that stuff worked as i explained to him but you know is there another way i could say hey this is how we can really do it all right First of all, I would not have told him that I use you ship. Right? Does anybody want to understand? Does anybody want to guess why he probably should not have told him that he uses on you ship? Now, he can probably find that out by watching our broadcast, but it's not that we're trying to hide the fact. But certain things you might want not want to offer up. Okay. Because when how did that conversation come about anyway? How did that whole thing get started when y'all started talking about you ship and just this back? Well, um what he was saying he had someone was using um I forgot what he said, but he can't use um U ship no more. He got locked out of U ship. Mm -hmm. because of somebody that he had was working with him. Um, and that's how the conversation came about. Okay, so y'all would just have yeah, the potential dispatch on my account. And y'all were just talking. He said, hey, I can't use this shit. <laughs> what I'm trying to figure out is, how do we get to the point of even talking about you shit with him? Well, I, I told him I have a U-Ship account, um, but my issue at the moment is I don't have access to Central Dispatch. Right. Right. I see. Okay. I see. I, 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 I see. All right. Here's where the conversation I'm sure to win. Do you have access to Central Dispatch? Mr. Omar Yeah, I do. Yes, you have access. Great, because if you do, I can supply you with all types of loads. I can supply you with all types of loads that you can run. Really? Yeah. All right, great. Now, if you ask me where you, you know, where am I getting the loads from, then you can truthfully the, the boats. Yeah, I, yeah, I use a you know, site called your ship. Right? But if he doesn't ask, he don't care where the loads are coming from. Right? Gotcha. He don't care where the loads come from, as long as you can supply him with what? Trucks and stuff he can add on to his existing trailer that has open slots, and you can fill them. 
The way the conversation should go when you're talking to owner operators or when you're talking to auto haulers is you might want to start it off with, so you haul cars, right? Yeah. On average, how many empty slots do you have on your trailer when you're running low? Does anybody see what I'm getting at? Does anybody see where this conversation is going? Yes. All right. How many empty slots on average do you have you know, when you run a load? Well, I got a, a nine car trailer and I usually keep about five, six, well, seven cars on there. So, you know, so on average you have two slots. Yep. What if I told you I can fill those two slots for you just about every time? And not only that, I can probably get you somewhere between $300 and $600 a car. Whoa. Why? Because he's probably used to running what? 150 175 a car. Right? Right? I mean, we learned that when? We learned that last week when the guy who was 22 years in the auto haul business, he confirmed that. Right? Right here, I'm in our studio. He confirmed that all the haulers, he's been doing this for 22 years, all the haulers, especially here in the South, okay, he, he, he is out of what? Jacksonville. And all the haulers here in the South normally get 150, 175, 185 a car. Now, if you're on your ship, right, and you're bidding what? On cars where people are offering what? 1800 2000 2500 you know, the move the vehicle, right? And you cut that in half, so you're getting on an $1,800 bid, you're offering to do it for 900 So if you win that bid, right, that means you got $900 um, that you have um, that's available to you. If you offer the person on you on Central Dispatch $500 to transport that car, that's about $350 more than they are used to getting. Is that correct? Does everybody see that? Yes. All right. Uh, Y'all made me start taking some louder Richie up here. Hello? <laughs> Is it me you're listening to? Um, okay. Um, but yeah, make sure. Yeah, I want to make sure everybody got that. Okay, so you're, uh, when you're starting out conversations, already have a roadmap to how you want that conversation to go out and how you want it to play out. Because I, I, I think what happened is when you started talking about telling him, hey, I got a YouTube account, this is what I'm going to do. I think he started picking your brain because, well, he really couldn't do it because he can't get access to YouTube anymore. Right? So that wouldn't really hurt you in that uh, situation because he can't get access to you, ship, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's not gonna that wouldn't that's not gonna hurt you in that conversation. But for future conversations, keep I'm keeping mind. You don't want to give up too much information. Okay? Because they hire you they're using you for your expertise, right? And if you teach them everything you know, then what? They don't really need you anymore. So kind of guard some guard some of your information. Kind of guard some of your information. Okay. Did I ask you a question, by the way? Hello? Did I answer your question? Yes, it did, Kevin. All right, cool, cool. All right. Next question. Next question. So 
Anybody have any other questions? Calvin, can you hear me? I hear you now. Yep. Okay. Um, when I usually go search for uh, new carriers, I go on a trucker's path, find the, uh, the drivers, carriers. Mm -hmm. and some of those guys, I don't know if the trucker's path yep. have limited, um, you know, selections for the equipment type. But most of these guys be having hot shots, but they list them for uh, flatbeds. Yeah. And they kind of like lie their way through the conversation. You know, I got this, I got that. You know, you can find me something, you know. And I'm looking, I say, what type of equipment you have? A flatbed. How much weight you want to, you know, willing to carry? And they say, uh, 10,000. <laughs> and I said, no, man, you can't more weight, man. Right. Get your weight up. <laughs> Look. And, you know, so, but. Look, this business is what it is, right? I mean, the business is what it is. And if someone is, <laughs> if, if they say, I want to make money as a trucker, but I don't want to carry more than 2,000 pounds, then they don't want to make money as a trucker. Right? But right, look, that's why I only deal with, and, and, and a lot of y'all have heard me say this time and time again. Mm -hmm. And then when I have someone like you come on and, 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 you, you, lend credence to what I'm talking about or to my way of thinking as a business person in this, this industry, okay, as an owner of business manager. I don't sign hot shots. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't sign hot shots. I don't seek hot shots. When hot shots I'm coming to me, I said, we don't handle hot shots. Mm -hmm. I don't sign box trucks. Don't come to me say, hey, I got a box truck. Hey, I can't do business with you because I don't sign box trucks, okay? Right. I don't sign, you know, the spinner vans, I don't do them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Why? Well, I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, they're wasting my time. Now, what you choose to go into, into business as, that's on you. No, no, right? I'm not doing it. I'm not but doing what it. I choose, yeah, but what I choose to represent, that's on me. Right. And like you go to an attorney and you say, I need a. a, a, a I need an attorney that is going to help me to um, sue this company because I got through a red. And you know, but I don't handle that type of stuff. I'm a trial litigation. Uh, I'm an attorney. You right. need a what? A personal injury attorney, right? Right. Same thing here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't do hot shots. I don't do spinner vans. I don't do you know um, box trucks. None of that stuff. I stick with what? Dry vans. Reefers, flatbeds, auto hogs. Okay. And the reason why I stick with those, well, I suggest you all stick with those, because you have an abundance of freight for those categories, yeah. type of carriers, and for those categories. Exactly. And if you have an abundance of freight, you can always find your carriers loads, always keep them running, which means they make money and you make money. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to find loads for carriers that have all these Issues. <laughs> That's what they are. They are. That's what they are. The issue. Well, I don't. I don't like no. Okay. <laughs> I like trying to date somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, I gotta have the best wine. I gotta have the you know the best hair weed. I can't, I can't, I gotta have that, no, I don't want none of that, you know, that imitation, I gotta have real human hair. I gotta have, <laughs> you know, when I, when I go to the nail shop, I can't go to this nail shop, why, because they don't charge enough. I need to go to the nail shop that charges this much money, you know, and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying the same, but, um, but it's, on, it's on the flip side, too. Yeah. Mm hmm you know, a lot of women, they, you know, they date men and say, and the men say, well, I, you know, I, I got to have all the attention on me, okay? And this is that, you know, uh, uh, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that, I, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need, you need too much. <laughs> you, have to, you have to have something to offer, right? You can't go into a relationship with just need, 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 need. You go into a relationship with what? What can I offer you? Now, with 
with that being said, I'm offering you this. What can you offer in return? It's not all one-sided. And that's what that relationship is when it comes to the hot shot and things like that. You know, they got all these these issues that stuff they can't do, they stuff they don't want to do, places they don't want to go. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I can't work with you. I seriously cannot work with you. Okay? And that's just how it is. Right? I'm not saying that if you're a hot shot, um, you know, you are you in a bad business. I'm just saying dispatchers for hot shots is not a way for you to get a whole bunch of business. You need to find another means to going out and securing business um, as a hot shot. Okay? Now, if you find your dispatcher who specializes in that, hey, that, that person is uh, he's a better man than me, but I can't do it. All right? All right, thank you. Did I answer your question, or is there still a sound like... Your voice sounds like, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of the answer. No, 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 you're absolutely right. Um, I just don't feel like being bothered with him because I think I was on the phone with one guy for 40 minutes because he was trying to pick my brain about <laughs> um, what, what should he do, you know, uh, what, should, what type of equipment he should go for, but he's broke. You know, it's just too much. And then uh, call power on it. Yeah, then there's one guy said he had a power only. And then um, he said he had a power only for car carriers, and then he wanted to pull freight. And then I asked him what type of car he had. He said I had a Dodge Ram. Oh you know, no, that ain't gonna work. People, they ain't not a power only, you know. So yeah, look, if you don't get a trucking business, get you a truck. <laughs> so you know, get you a small semi. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? I mean, come on. I mean, you're in the trucking industry, but see, see, here's the thing. A lot of guys want to say they're in the trucking industry, but they don't want to learn how to drive a truck. Right. The, what, what, what they're really saying is, man, I'm afraid of them dogs on semis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what they're really saying. Or well, okay. they don't want to invest. Exactly. You know. Exactly. You know, you, know, you cannot make an omelet without doing what? With eggs, right? Without breaking some eggs, man. Yeah. You got to break some eggs. You got to sacrifice something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. So, so they got to put up. You know, if they want to be in this industry and be on the side that's making the real money. Right. Right. All right. Great question, by the way. Thanks. And thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, anyone else has a question? Another question? Y'all don't mind me. I, 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 I'm still um, looking for these um, these um, these what you call it? Hold on. I think this is. I think this is it right here. I think this is it right here. I think this is it right here. This is it. Payroll. Info payroll recap. Let's see, let me pull this up. Y'all give me a second. I'm trying to pull up. Yeah, that's what me and my this is my stuff. <laughs> All right, here we go. I found it. Um, it's in my email. I got a lot of email. Y'all see this email right here? And y'all see that? And can everyone see this? Yes. Yeah. All right. This is a a settlement statement, okay, from when I was um, running, okay? Uh, there it is right there, the invoice date, voucher, reference number. That was 9-21-17. That was the invoice date. This is like uh, back when I was driving trucks, and I was still driving trucks, okay? Um, the amount, the vendor, which is me, B-U-T-C-A, that was my... Um, my um what they call your um your vendor code with Western Express. Okay? They give you a vendor code, B U T I don't know if any of y'all have ever worked for a trading company, they give you like a you know, like a pay code. Um like a vendor code. And because you were an on operator, you are considered a vendor. You're not an employee. Okay? And your checks up or settlements, they're not pay stub. Does everybody get that? 
Yes. All right. Now, here you go. This was what it was for this load right here. This is this is this is one load. Um, uh, uh, twenty two hundred and fifty nine dollars and thirty seven cent. All right. It was uh, direct deposit. Okay. Um, you know, give you the rate deposit number. There it is right there. Uh, $2,259.37 and over 100. Non negotiable wire direct deposit. That was my address back then on Stucky Ave in that little small apartment, whatever his may be. Uh, there's the, and there I am, the the operator, Arm um, Settlements, RB Best Transport LLC, um, unit number. That was my truck unit number right there. That's my owner op code right there. And trip payments, and it breaks it down. Okay, um, here's the trip payment. Uh, it was pick up in Glover, um, uh, North Carolina, to Hazleton, um, PA. Now these are three loads that I rent. This is each week's um, settlement, so they give you a week of settlement loads. Okay, so that that was my week's check for those three runs, for those runs, four runs for that week. Okay, so. I ran from uh, Glover, North Carolina, to Hazleton, um, Pennsylvania. That load paid nine hundred, no, six hundred and eleven dollars. Okay, that's six hundred and eleven dollars. All right, it was eighty nine point seven eight miles. Okay, I think that's what I think that's what it is. Yeah, low miles. No. I take that back. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Low miles. Yeah, low miles. Low miles. Yeah, that was a low mile. Eighty-nine point seven eight miles. All right, nine hundred. No, six hundred and eleven dollars and eighty cent. All right. Now, fuel surcharge. Right, all that type of stuff. Empty, blase, blase, blase. Uh, comes out. I think I wound up getting like four hundred forty-five dollars after fuel surcharge. All that type of stuff. So see how that works out. Then I got one from Valdosta, Georgia, to Greenville. Um, that one paid one thousand one hundred fifty dollars. All right. After my fuel and all that type of stuff, I wind up taking what nine hundred twenty-two dollars and forty-five cents. Y'all see how that's playing out, right? And then you got this one right here, which was uh, from New York, PA, from 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 York, PA, to Alachua, Florida. Now that was actually a pretty long run, um, but I took it. Hold up, is that right? Let's six. I took it for nine hundred and fifty dollars. I think that's what it was. Am I looking at this wrong? That might have been a 922. Okay, I'm looking at this wrong. It was 611 on one, 445 on another one, and then 922 on that last one from from York, PA to um, to Alaska, Florida. Yeah, 922, 445, and 611. Okay, so those were the payouts. Total revenue, 2,200 and. Fifty nine dollars and thirty seven cents. Okay. Um, other ones I have, I, I have all these listed out on another one. Let me see here. I might be able to pull them up by this right here. Let me just say B U T C A. Let me check that out. B U T C A. But there we go. And then I'll go right there. These are all the. See the BUTCA search. All right, here we go. These are all of my. See, I ran some loads, y'all. These are each. Now these are each week. Each one of these is a weekly. Um, is a weekly settlement. Each one of these is a week's worth of settlements. Okay. Um, you see right here, T Green on Western Express, T Greens at Western Express, T Green at Western Express. These are all from Western Express. Okay, all these are what I was running with with with, with Western Express as a owner op. Okay, so that's where all these come from, right? If I click on another one and pull it up for you, trying to show you what it looks like. 
This one that was twenty two hundred and seventy four dollars. Uh, but we, I used to average somewhere between two and three thousand dollars, you know, um, uh, take home after all my expenses and everything. I would take home about twenty two hundred to three, sometimes four thousand dollars uh, per week. Now, this was in two thousand. A lot of this was when I was with Western Express in the early part. Now, that last year with Western Express, my last year with Western Express is when I started making some serious money because I never left Florida. When I went to Florida and just stayed in Florida, I need to find those. But when I went to Florida and I stayed in Florida, that's when I started making real money. So before I was just bouncing around. Remember I told you how I was bouncing around all over the place? Right? Bouncing around all over the place. I was just taking loads, you know, grabbing loads, grabbing loads, grabbing loads. But the great thing about it was I was finding my own loads. I never took one load from Western Express. Not once did I ever take a load from Western Express. I always found my own loads because I wanted to learn how to run my own truck. Okay? And when you're out there as an owner operator and you're running your own truck, and after paying for your fuel and everything else, you know, 2200 the thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars a week, that wasn't bad money. Okay? That that's not bad money. Okay, when you're when you have cashed out of everything, you paid all your bills and your actual money that's going into your pocket is that much money. Okay? You're doing pretty good. Right? So so and remember, this was my first year running as an owner operator. Before that I only had eight months experience driving total. So I, I think I did exceptionally well as an owner operator, you know, coming into the business and just off rip saying, I don't want any help, I just want to run my own loads. And remember, I was only getting 73 and a third percent of the total of what was coming out. So what you so what you were seeing there reflected is my 73 and a third percent minus my fuel and all my expenses. So uh, I was doing pretty good. Okay. Um, now, when I started running in Florida, it was a totally different story. Because I was running three loads per day, consistently the same load, the Coke Soda bottle runs and stuff, and that type of stuff. I need to find those. You know, if I can find those, and that'll show you um, what I'm talking about. Uh, it's probably going to be up towards my later runs. What I do is I look for them, and I find them for you. Here's one that was 2,900 payout. Um, Calhoun, Tennessee, yeah, I was running those, you know, running some pretty good loads there. Uh, 990, 813, 780, uh, you know, not going very many miles. So, but I was pretty good at, I was pretty good at finding my own freight. I was actually pretty good at it. All right? So, but that's what a settlement uh, statement looks like, you know, if you're running on a op under someone else's um, authority. Okay? Um, I just thought I'd show you all that. Give y'all some um, some background on that. All right. Questions, anybody? Next question. More questions? More questions? Let's see what's going on in the chat here. Let's check out some of the chat. Anybody have a question? Let me know. I'm checking some of the chats here real quick. All right, nothing on the chat. No one, no one has a question. We in Q and A, so we got a question. Now it's time to ask it. Does anybody have a question? No, nobody has a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question. On the with us having access to those uh low boards, what are, how do we get to the um low boards besides what's in the back office? Oh you mean the nine and one additional low boards? Yes. Well, anybody wanna tell them how do you how you do that? Anybody wanna tell them how to do that? You okay. have to pay for it. He has to no. get a um. She's gonna no. have to get one of his truckers um. MC no, no, or no, DOT no. number. Yeah, no, 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 no. What he's trying to say is this: we mm -hmm. offer access to more than a hundred mobiles, right? Yes. We have 
I think this is what you're trying to say. We give you on this roller deck, you have 28 low boards, right? Yes. You're trying to say, where do you get the other 90 plus low boards, right? Mobile Express, huh? There you go. Mobile Express. Click right here. Now what, now, what she was alluding to is if you are trying to get low boards that we don't give you access to, like that or something like that, okay, then she was absolutely right about, you know, getting your, your carriers to, um, that you have on a contract to um, give you permission to get that under their MC number or DOT number because you can legally do that because you are a representative of the carrier. Do you understand that? But this is how we use the Mobile Express. Once you click on it, you go on through here, and then you can just either click on one of the companies. These are all the, all the other companies that you have access to all of these low boards. Every last one of these. Um, Landstar, um, all the Landstars, uh, the Mercer, um, somebody's got a whole lot going on in the background. Who's that? Okay, there we go. Thank you. This is a land star, all of the verses <laughs> and things of that nature. You're going to have access to all of these companies. Um, you just go ahead and pick one of them. I'm just going to pick one at, at random and pull it up here, search, you know, and, 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 and they're the loads. So you're able to, to access all these other uh, um, companies loads just by going in here and just picking one and clicking on search and there are their loads. Okay, some of them are going to have the rates listed. Some are going to have call. Um, let's see if we can find something that has the rate listed. Let's go to Landstar. Let's see what they have listed. There's Landstar. Click search and there we go. So you got quite a few. Um, Companies in here that has stuff going on. Okay. All righty. Uh, All right. Thanks. Cool, 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 cool. All right. More questions. More questions. More questions. More questions. We got time. We got time. It's just eleven fifty-two. Got about half hour. We don't have an hour. Hey, Kevin. Yes, sir. Do you uh? Do you ever use the, the other low boards, the, pay, the ones that we have to pay for, one, two, three, and that? One, two, three, I don't, I don't use one, two, three. Now, don't get me wrong. One, two, three is a very good low board. I, my reason for not using one, two, three has to do with, uh, it's not personal, but it was business. Because we had a setup with them, if y'all remember. We had a nice, decent uh, setup with one, two, three, where we had agreed in contract with them, where we had agreed to pay them. I can't even remember how much it was, but they reneged on. They changed the whole thing around, and and they just did it kind of abruptly and didn't even give us any type of notice. Where we was paying them, I think this is where this is the way it was. Because at, at the time we only had about sixty members within our um, network. So we were a brokerage firm during that time. And we had about 60 uh, freight broker agents on with us. And the agreement we made with um, 123 was that we wanted to have an account where we can add more brokers on or more people onto our, um, onto our account. So they agreed for us to pay a a fee for every um, 30 or 35 people we brought on. So for the first 35, we would pay them like $250. And then we would pay, like, our monthly fee was like, was always going to be the same. But it was high. It was like $200 per month or something like that. Right? No, 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 no. I think they're back. I think they're back. We had a one. We had a. We had a higher fee margin that we was going to pay. It was like two hundred 
spend some dollars, and we can add as many uh, people to, um, to our account. So we got up to like 60 or 70. Then all of a sudden, they blocked half our people and said that we need to pay an additional um, two hundred dollars per month for every thirty for every so many people we had on. I said, hold on, that's not. Uh. So we talked about that. Then we said, well, let's try this. We we negotiated with them, and we said, I tell you what, what we would do is we would pay the two hundred fifty dollars uh, um, per per month, and for every thirty that we had on, we would we would cut you a check for of uh, two hundred dollars, but we would just still continue paying our two hundred fifty dollars a month. So for every thirty five that we had on, we would we would send them two hundred bucks. That went on for about maybe a three months. Then they switched it up again. And after that we just said, you know what? Don't even worry about it. Because you all you know, clearly you don't want to stick to what what we agreed upon, but you want to base it on how well we're doing, it's gonna change how we are paying. I say, no, I'm not going to do that. So, you just kind of part of ways with them. Okay? Now, not saying that they don't have a good logo, but they do. They have a great logo. They have great features. But it came down. Huh? Individually. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they have a great logo. But we just have a business. We got a difference of how to do business. It just didn't work out well business wise. So we had to. And that happens sometimes. You know, you're not going to be able to work with everybody. Okay? That's just part of being, you know. When you use the camera, huh? when, when you use the two of them, did you, uh, did you find that they had like, uh, they had like different, they dealt with different brokers or different loads, or was it pretty much the same thing on both load boards? Yeah. Pretty much the same thing on both low boards. Yeah. So if you're on 123 and trunk is fast, you're going to find some of the same load. To be honest with you. I mean, I only use two low boards, really. Direct freight and trunk is fast. And the reason why I use direct freight is because they tend to have you know, a lot of loads that, that, are, that are not on trunk is fast. Okay. So, all right, everybody. Okay. Right, I'm gonna try this. Right, so, thanks. How, how do you feel about the tag board? About that? Yes, sir. I, I think it's a waste of money. I mean, if you ask me for I think it's a waste of money. What's the average load on that pen right now? I can imagine tell me. Uh, Twenty-five hundred. Please, like two dollars or something. Okay. What's the average load paying on trucker pad? Twenty-five hundred. Can I tell me that? Around the same or, or more. Exactly. What 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 you have to load is paying on direct freight. Same. So what's the point of paying a hundred and fifty or two hundred dollars more for that when you're getting this pretty much the same load at the same rate? True. Sound like waste, a waste of money. Waste of money. <laughs> it's waste of money. I, I'm be honest with you. When I first came into the business. I got caught up in the hype on that. We ain't gotta give him that debt logo. We ain't gotta give him that debt logo. That guy gets that in the We jumped on it. After a month on that, I realized this ain't no better than trucker pad or one, two, three or whatever. I mean, I don't pay that kind of money. Now you get a lot of bells and whistles. Right. My range rover. We have the adjustable this terrain where I can raise it up, lower it down. Got the the back up rear mirror, right? I can look on it, the camera back up. Doop, 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 doop. 
They got all that type of stuff. But but guess what? It was the same way as my Cadillac. That's why I got to put it in drive, <laughs> right? I got to press the gas to we'll make it go. I got to turn it this way and that way to make it turn. I got to hit the brake and make it stop, right? It's got a radio just like that one does. It got heat and air just like that one does. But uh, all the bells and whistles work, you know, uh, $80,000 for a vehicle or the $30,000 for a vehicle. You understand know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I got you. That's what I look at that. You know, remember, you are, you are a business, you, you are a business owner. And one of the best ways to make money as a business owner is to do what? Not spend money, right? Correct. <coughs> That's the easiest way to make money. <coughs> you know, your first move, the less money you spend. <coughs> yeah, the less money you spend, the more money you, you take in. So don't go out there and unnecessarily spend money. And that to me is a is a, an unnecessary expense. Okay? Hey Calvin. Yeah. On average, about how long do you usually take on a low search for a carrier? <coughs> well. I mean like like on a, a diff a, a tough one when you're trying to find them like find them what he really wants to say. There's like a like a two dollar market right now, and and, and your 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 carrier won't three dollars. Okay, well that's fine. Now. And I know you can piece them together. I, I know I, I know you can work it, but like how long would you think to Well, Mr. Calvin, I'm gonna attest to what you said. Right now, it's hard to find those loads, but if you got a driver that knows that it's hard to find those loads, then they just tell you to get the best that you can get because that's the problem that I'm having now. Like some of those I have is coming out like a, mm -hmm. coming out to like a, like a, well, he's in Florida, so he's looking to run those in Florida because he want to be home for Thanksgiving. So most of the loads are like a dollar seven, ninety eight cent, a dollar a mile, a dollar eighty a mile. So. When you have drivers that know that it's slow, like my driver know that it's slow, but he just tell me to find the best he can, and I find the best ones, and it's up to him to say yes or no. Exactly. Now, also you got to remember too. What time of year is it? Yeah, it's slow. Time yeah, it's the winter, winter time. Exactly. Yeah, and then my driver told me he said it's gonna it's slow this time of year. He already yeah. told me you're not gonna find no freight in Florida paying no yeah. money this time of year. Exactly. So when you got drivers that already know, then that makes it easier. And then I think I got him a load the other day that's paying like two dollars and seven cents. So mm -hmm. he took that because yeah. he only going a couple of hundred miles. Exactly. So look, as I told you all about uh, three weeks ago, winter is coming. That's in your back office. Look at that video, how to survive the winter. Okay, because so this is traditionally a slow time. And we explain to you all why that is, because it, it, it's going to be slow on both ends, both north and south. North, it's going to be slow. Why? Because a lot of drivers don't want to go up north during the winter. Right? The south, because a lot of drivers are now migrating down south, and they pretty much flooded the, you know, the southern region. So the rates go down. You see what I'm saying? So that's what happens during the winter time. So you got to be a little bit more patient. And on our business, we have to do a little bit more digging and piecing loads together and being innovative on our load acquisition to get our carrier and adequate no amount of money. You may not get it on one load, but if you piece enough yeah. loads together that week, as far as the week is concerned, they turn out okay. Okay? Okay. Okay. Well, that's how that works. All right? Um, and as you see here, let me go and log in real quick on this one. 
Can you hear me? I hear you. Hold on. I'm just logging in on this direct frame. And uh, check out the load map here real quick. Like she said, Florida. Yeah. Can I make a quick look at what the load is in Florida? There they go. Uh, let's see if I can load up my watch card. See if we can. Let's say three dollars um, per mile. We're gonna leave it. At, we're gonna put it at red. No, put it at green. I'm gonna do green. Let's say. Uh, Mr. Calvin, my driver said he'll take a dollar eighty. The lowest he'll go is a dollar eighty. So I just try to find him something paying two or better. Yeah, I mean, two, this time of year, two are better. I mean, come on. That's, that's a good approach. All right, so let's say two are better. Let's do a load search. And four to a two in Florida. I'm glad they highlighted two are better. Oh, there we go. We got two out, two thirteen, two forty one, two sixty one, two sixty one, eight thousand fifty one cent a mile. Remember I told y'all about them short miles. Y'all remember I told y'all about that? Yeah, yeah, they be they be they be loving it. That's forty seven miles from Orlando to Winter Haven. Y'all see that? It ain't the best ones, I think, sometimes. Hey, hey, hey. Duh! <laughs> Let me tell you something. I was talking to this guy who's going to sign up, I guess, on Monday. He took his guy from North Carolina to New York, and um, he don't drop off until Monday. Mm -hmm. and he had a um, step deck. And I was telling him, I said, man, you're losing money. I said, because I could have had your uh, driver going like 10 different, you know, Stops within three days, and he'd have made yeah, like yeah. probably six thousand dollars. Yeah, the short run. You know, but yeah, the yeah. short run. No, that one's going well. This one's going well. Forty-seven miles. Forty-seven miles. Paying four hundred bucks. Can't beat that. Nah. You can find three that are in the area like that. They're connecting each other. Yep. That's 12. What's the name, man? Okay. You can easily run three, three loads like the other day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 12 on the bus. Then you got this one paying $6.77. I guarantee you that's another short mile run. Trip miles, 48, $325. And it's leaving out of where? Where's that leaving out of? Can you tell me? I'll see where it's leaving from. The green one? Yeah. I can't see the green. I can't see that. Uh, hold on. This is Millville, Meville. M Millville, Florida to Gainesville, Florida. Yeah. Maxville. Now, get this. That ain't far from where? This one, right? Yep. That one Haven, right? Mm-hmm. You couldn't dead yeah. head? You could not dead head from Winter Haven back down to Gainesville? Yeah, you can. But see, those are reefer loads. My my driver driving a van, so it's kind of tight with the van load. The reefer load showing a little better than the van load. So. Yeah. But my point is, you know, Florida is a great place to make money if you're staying in Florida. Florida got a bad rep. I don't think nobody said Florida has a very bad rep. It, it's undeserved because you got drivers who are acting like children. I don't want to stay in Florida. I don't. I don't care. I want to go home. I want to get out of Florida. Really? So you can stay in Florida and make yourself about twelve hundred to seventeen hundred dollars a day for a week, <laughs> right? <laughs> and if you wanted to, you can park your truck somewhere and pay them to watch it for the weekend. You can fly home and still have more money than you make a whole month. <laughs> Driving all over the place. That's true. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Tell somebody to fly home. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah. Then I use my head. 
They're not using their head. Mm -hmm. And that's what you all are for. You all are there to show them Variety. how to be a business owner, how to treat this like a business, how to think with a business mindset. That's your job. Because they're not going to see it. You know? I mean, a, a first class, a first class Ticket from Florida to New York is about what? Say about the bus. Mm-hmm. If you making fifteen hundred dollars a day, five days a week here in Florida, by the end of the week you got to step what? Seven, eight thousand dollars? Mm-hmm. You can't afford seven hundred you can't afford two or three hundred dollars to park your truck. I'm in a secure area that's got a security. And take you a you a seven hundred dollar round trip, first class, back to New York and back. Or to California and back. Come on, man. I park my truck in Florida, fly home every weekend, and fly back to Florida and just run loads in Florida. I wouldn't I wouldn't run loads nowhere else. Honestly. So when I found out that I could run them three loads uh, that I was running, Tallahassee, from Coco to Bottom Plant, to um, Live Oak, from Live Oak to a natural bottled water, a natural back to Tallahassee, to Coco Bottom Plant, 350, 680, 860, $1,770 per day, five days a week. I gave up running anywhere else when I was home every night in Tallahassee. Now, if I wasn't from Florida and I lived in California, guess what? I'd have left my truck. As a matter of fact, here's what I would have did. <laughs> I would have rented me an apartment in Florida. Mm -hmm. Or got me a little trailer, mobile home or something, or a little less of a plot of land or something, you know, rent me a little mobile home spot or whatever, somewhere I can park my truck. <laughs> right? I park my truck and I fly back to California every weekend and I fly back to Florida to make money. Mm. I wouldn't be concerned about it you, because you can afford to have what? Two residences if you run like that, right? Yep. Come on, man. I, mean, I think that's I mean, a misconception, Calvin, though, um, that these guys and girls, they want to go to Florida, but they want to do long haul. Everything is not about long haul. Long haul is expensive. Did y'all hear what I just said? Long haul is expensive. That is the the greatest con that the the industry has pulled on, on operators. Wow. Y'all don't realize that? I believe it. And it takes you a while. Well, we, we realize it, but the truck the truckers yeah. don't. Some of yeah. them realize it, but a lot of them don't. Yeah, and see, that, that's one of the biggest cons that the that industry has has propagated. You know, <laughs> get out there and run, you know, five, four weeks at a time, and you're running 800, 1,100 miles, and because, you know, you run them, you know, especially if you get on a team truck and you're running them 2,200 miles, that's where the money's at. Because you got to run 2,200 miles and they're going to pay you $5,000 to run 2,200 miles. That ain't no money. It's your best for a team. So it's going to take a team to run that, right? Mm-hmm. So that means you, you really running what? You're not running, you're not getting paid 5,000 miles. You're not getting paid 5,000 miles. You're basically getting $2,500 for what? 1,100. For what? 1,100 miles. Right? Mm -hmm. Which means you only make what two dollars and fifty cents a mile, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> you better run that than to run a short load, thirty-nine miles from Tallahassee to Live Oak, and make three hundred fifty. Then pick up a load of Live Oak that runs seventy-nine miles to a lateral that pays six eighty. Then pick up a load of um, a lateral. That runs 104 miles back to Tallahassee. That pays 860. You rather run 2,200 miles <laughs> to 
and, and, and get paid five thousand dollars. It's gonna take you if you're a single driver. That will take you pretty much your week to run. You're only gonna be able to run six hundred to six hundred fifty miles per day. That should be pushing. That's a what four five day run, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, that, that, that's that's stupid. And you're gonna spend three times of the of the amount of money on fuel. Not to mention the wear and tear on your truck. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest con that this industry has ever pulled. Got these drivers thinking about long haul, that's where they go long haul. No, short runs is the way to go. Short runs is the way to go. Right. And where I got turned on to short runs is when I was doing Western Express, I did a favor for the dispatcher once and it opened my eyes. So remember, I didn't take loads um, from our dispatcher at Western Express. But this one dispatcher, he kept calling me, he said, man, look, I need to tell me, I need a favor, man, I need a favor, I need a favor. I know you don't run our loads, but I got a bunch of empty trailer moves. They're only, they're only like 50 miles apart. You pick up here, I got like 37 trailers that's got to be picked up here, and then it's got to be run there, and you bring the full, and then you bring, a, you bring the full trailer back to when you pick up what's called, and you just run them back. I said, shoot. I said, well, what are they paying? He said, well, the empty trailer moves are paying two fifty per trailer, right? The full trailer moves are coming back, they're paying three fifty. I said, well, shit, okay. Because why? Wow, fifty miles? It was like fifty six miles. How many empty trailers, how many moves can I do in a day? In an 11 hour driving shift? Can anybody guess who's there? Six? No, like uh, five? You can do ten, about, ten, about eight moves. Yeah, but, but I'm going what? Back and forth, right? I'm making two fifty going, three fifty fifths coming back, right? So two fifty and three fifty, two fifty and three fifty, two fifty and three fifty, so I'm making what? Two fifty? Three fifty. Two fifty? Three fifty. Two fifty. And that's twenty four hours. Huh? Eight, 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 eight of you do, you do four turnarounds, that equals $2,400. Basically, yeah. So I'm getting 2 minutes going, 3 minutes coming back. So what's 2 and 3 dollars 600 That's 600 So it's basically $600 per trip, back and forth trip, right? How many back and forth trips can I do? I'm going to have an hour driving ship. At 50 miles, roughly just 50 miles, so it takes me about what, an hour? An hour each way. Right? About 10 loads. So even if I just, huh? Five turns. Yeah, five turns. Or five turns anyway. Yeah. So that's, so that's 600 times five is what? $3,000. There you go. Twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars a dog on day per day. I made so much. Money. It took me to move all those trailers. Man, I ran every day. I ran on the weekends. I ran on Sunday. <laughs> I was making money. All I got, all I was counting, man. I'm making money. I'm making, and all I'm doing is just. It wasn't in the mountains. It wasn't nothing like that. It was just pick up empty trailers. You put, I mean, you pull up the one, you hook it up, take off. Go there, back in, drop it up, go around the corner, and pick up the full one. It's already filled. I ain't got to wait for them to load on the nothing. It was, it was basically just a, like a power only type thing. Drop the hook, drop the hook, drop the hook. That's all it was. Man, I, was, man, I got so good at that, man. I got so, I got so good at that drop the hook, I could back up, drop that bad boy, play around the corner, back up, hook that bad boy up, and be out of there in, in 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> that's how good I got at it. Because that's all I was doing for the entire week. You talking about it, and that's what opened my eyes to short runs. Mm -hmm. After that, that's all I wanted to run. So when I hit Florida, 
I just stayed. And all the other drivers would call me on the dog and say, man, how you hold? Now I look on Facebook Live and you in Florida. I look on, I mean, you, do you ever leave Florida? Nah, man, but you always, yeah, I'm right, I'm making money. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't going to, why would I leave Florida? Every weekend, I'm home. I'm on Facebook Live, I'm sitting in front of the flat screen watching football or basketball or something. Guys call us, man, uh, you home every weekend? Man, I'm home every night. <laughs> well, you, well, you ain't driving trucks no more. No, I mean, I'm just driving trucks no more. I'm doing about sixteen, seven dollars a day. Where you get that, Florida? <laughs> you have a good day. You're welcome. But that, you know, this is what you have to talk to your, you know, your own operators about, and you all have to really advise them on how to make some real money. And, and, and a lot of them, they're going to fight you because they've been taught the wrong thing. The industry is basically just feeding them a bunch of, you know, stuff to get them to run those long loads. Don't get me wrong, the long loads have to be ran, but I think those long haul loads, they need to be paying a lot more. Oh, yeah. Definitely. They really need to be paying a lot more for the longer hauls. But until that happens, I advise my carriers to run short run, unless they have dedicated long runs, where they are coming from way up Midwest, running down to Florida, and they got about three or four stops on you know, the way down, and that run is paying them like $7,000, $8,500 just for that run. And then we got to find them loads going back to get back to what? The money load. Unless they're doing something like that. If you grab long haul runs and you're not, I think long haul run, run, long haul runs, anything over 800 miles should have a minimum of 275 per mile. Minimum. Hey, Calvin. Yeah. Can you hear me, Calvin? Mm-hmm. I hear you. Um, I, I, I suggest that to one of my carriers and his, his um issue was he think that he would spend all day at at um at a receiver, you know, with a load that's paying three hundred dollars. Okay. I'll hold on. What is <laughs> <laughs> So does he spend shorter time at loads that's going long haul? I, I, well, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So let's look at this from from, from a mathematical standpoint. If you're spending two hours at this receiver, right, getting loaded, mm -hmm. running short hauls, versus spending one hour at the receiver on long hauls, okay, let's calculate this out. Let's do some math. Where are we going, y'all? We're going to the good old what? Calculator! It's calculator time, calculator time! <laughs> Where's our calculator? Anybody, anybody know where I calculated at? There it is right there. It's calculator time. Calculator time. All right. <laughs> Listen to me, I can make it right. <laughs> y'all watch y'all. I'm right here. Come on, I know, I know we got some Karate Kid. I know we got some Karate Kid fans in here. I watched Karate Kid about 50 times when I was growing up. I watched it a few times. When Daniel's son had that knee problem. Let's go put some hot hands on it. All right, let's put our hot hands on this problem. All right, so let's say you got a 900 mile run, right? Let's say that 900 mile run is paying you $2.75 per mile, right? $2,475, y'all keep that out there. $2,475 on a 900 mile run is paying $2.75. That's a pretty decent long, long run, right? That's about average, right? 
Jose Marquilla. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I know. Yep. All right. Now, 900 miles, 20, y'all remember these numbers now. Somebody write this down, 2475, because I got to jump off of it. All right? So 900 miles divided by what? You only want to get, what, 600 miles at best in order to run, right? So divide that by 65 mile an hour. 65. Divide, divide by 10. By 10? Why don't you, you divide it by 10? No, you're going to divide it by... Because you're only going to run... Yeah, so, because you're only going to run about 600 to 650 miles per your 11-hour driving shift. But if you want to... But if you want to calculate that 900... I'm sorry, hold up. But, but if you want to calculate the 900... Divided by 65 miles an hour. That's 13.84 hours. You see what I'm saying? You're not, you're not gonna be able to run that. Why? Because you only, because you, because you, because you can't go over what? 11 hours, right? 11 hours. Yeah. Now, actually, are you gonna drive the whole 11 hours? No. That's why I said 10. Exactly. Actually, probably going to be more like nine. It's going to take you about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, just to find your truck stop to stop at. Right. If you out doing that, if you out doing them stretches, them truck stops ain't like they ain't like in the next city. Them bad boys, some of them be stretched out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm up, up. Yeah, exactly. And if, and if you out there, yeah. If you out there trying to find a little small um, truck stop, if you ain't there by 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you out of luck. <laughs> I'm telling you, you out of luck. But so, so, let's say you're going to run basically just nine, nine hours, right? You're going to run about nine hours. So, <clears throat> if you're running nine hours, right, nine times 60 miles an hour, you're going to get about 540 miles. So it's going to take you a good two days to run that 900 miles, right? Day and a half. All right? At least a day and a half, yes. Yeah, well, day and a half. That's still two days because that half a day you ain't doing nothing else. Right? Right. You ain't got time to do that, but go shut down and chill until what? You're 10 hours up. 10 hours. You know what I'm saying? So there you go. So you, you got to waste two days on that 900 miles to make what? $2,475. <coughs> Not to mention what it's going to cost you in view. We ain't, we ain't even got into that. Right? Yeah. <coughs> so <coughs> two days, you have to get it from that standpoint. Two days it costs you to, to run 900 miles. And make that twenty four seventy five. <clears throat> now let's say you spend an hour at this shipper, right? At least, right? No, hold up. But we're doing this to show him because he said, "Well, it takes you longer on short runs to net the shipper than do take you on long runs." Which I don't know where he get that from. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say that long run, you know. It's, he, he told it, I'm taking an hour to get loaded, and on the short run, he's taking two hours. Right? <clears throat> so, let's look at this. Let's say <coughs> he's taking an hour at the shippers, so he's taking an hour on the, I'm getting loaded, hour getting unloaded. <coughs> That's knocking off what? Two hours, right? Right. Right. <laughs> so he knocked off two hours. So if he's knocking off two hours, that's going to cut into his, but that's still going to bring him up to about two days. <coughs> right? But remember, if he's smart, if he knows what he's doing, when he's at the ship, he should be at what? He should put his truck at what? In a sleeper bird. Exactly. His truck should be a sleeper bird. When he's sitting at the ship. 
Why? Because you got to get that time back when. You got to get that time back when. When you go to the recap, you'll get that time back. Exactly. You got to get it back on the recap. <coughs> and your recap gets added after what? Your, your full sleep of birth, right? Mm. Right. That's why sometimes when you get to eight hours, your truck tells you you can run. Y'all yep. see that? You're in your sleeper bird, you're supposed to be in there for 10 hours. Right? But if you look at it sometimes at 8 hours or 8 hours and 20 minutes or whatever case it is, sometimes you see your truck says, okay, you're ready to run. And you're allowed to actually run. Why? Because what? Those hours only got put back on your whip. Exactly. You, they added your recap hours. Exactly. So now, what you have, so if he's doing that, he's really not losing time. He's just picking it up on the back end. Right? Now, now, that's on if he's running that, which means if he does that right there on those long runs, he's going to go a bit around how many loads per week? About two. Two. Two loads, right? So, so that's that twenty four seventy five. Twenty four seventy five times two. He's gonna make four thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Running it his way. That's running it his way. And we ain't we ain't taking out people. We haven't even touched people yet. We ain't talking about the people. Yeah, people gonna cut that in half. Oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> people right now is about what, two eighty? See yeah, right now, about 280. On nationwide. On nationwide, right? You only get in, yeah. <laughs> you only get in five point, what, six miles yeah. to the gallon. The gallon on average. Right? So, on field, hold up here. I, I did it wrong. 280, you got what, 5.6, right, divided by, no, you got 900 divided by 5.6, right, yeah. So it's going to take 160 gallons, right? To run that run. Y'all y'all see what I did? Yeah, full time. Five point six miles. So you're gonna take hundred and sixty gallons to run that with solid. So that times two eighty. Four hundred fifty dollars a few. To make that run. Right? So you gonna so so you gonna do what five hundred dollars because you gotta have room to get to the truck stop right? We ain't gonna just run it in and then be out of gas, <laughs> right? You gotta have money to get back to another what gas station, right? Times two, you gotta times that by two. Exactly. So you gonna do five hundred times two? That's a thousand dollars on fuel. Probably two thousand fifty because you never know how far that truck stop is. Exactly, but minimum. Yeah, but minimum, you're going to spend $1,000 to $1,100 on you, right? That week. Right. So now that $49.50, you're going to spend that money on you. So that ain't 50 Right? Right. 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 Let's check out them short runs. <laughs> Let's see how we come out. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. see, look, this is how you run a truck. This is what a lot of truck drivers don't do. They don't sit down. And they don't. They don't map this out by the math. Okay. Okay. They just looking at numbers. Oh, I can make this much money, and now you can't. <laughs> okay. This is this is what it really looks like. All right. So you done made thirty eight fifty. Is what you. Go for that, you know. 
And, and God forbid on that long trip, you don't get a flat tire, you got some wear and tear on your brakes, you got this and that, whatever, because you got wear and tear on your truck, right? So, 3850, now let's do some, let's do some shout rounds. <laughs> let's do some shout rounds. Let's say <clears throat> you running in Florida, okay, we've already looked at some of those in Florida. We know what their average is about what? For, you know, 60, 100 mile run. 60 mile run is paying, you know, a 38 mile run, we saw was paying what? 400, right? And 325, 100, 400. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> let's, just, let's just look at, let's not do theoretical, let's go with what we know. We know that if you're in Tallahassee and you pick up the Coca Cola bottle run, you can go 39 miles, right, and get paid $350. Okay? Now, if we, let's say if we do, if, if we take, let's just take an average of the runs um, that I ran. So I made 350 on a 39, on a, on a, a 39 mile run. Then on a 79 mile run, and I made 680. And then on a 104 mile run, I made 860. That's 1890. Divided by three, that's an average. Equals $630 per run. So let's do that as an average. So that's what the average size be, divided by three, right? But let's say you're not running that particular load, but let's use that as a as a gauge for short runs. Okay? So on average, six hundred and thirty dollars is what you're getting paid on those short runs. Some are gonna be higher, some are gonna be less, but it's gonna average out to about that. Matter of fact, let's shave off two hundred dollars off that to make this a real, you know, fair heading. So let's shave off two hundred dollars. Oh, that's six thirty. So six thirty minus two hundred on average, four thirty a run, right? Yeah. Right. Now let's take an average of the miles. Right. One was was thirty nine miles plus seventy nine miles plus one hundred and four miles. Divide that by three. You got an average of 74 miles. So an average of 74 miles, paying $430 for each, for each run. Y'all see what we're doing? Yep. All right. So if you got 74 miles um, that you got to run, right, pretty much times three, right, that's a total miles of 222 miles versus 900 miles. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So a uh, total miles of 222 miles versus 900 miles, right? And you're making $430 per, um, um, what, 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 what's, what's that? $430 per load. 12 miles. Yeah. yeah. So you're averaging four hundred thirty dollars a load, right? Twelve hundred and ninety dollars. Exactly. Per day. Well, let, hold on. Let, let's show it to those viewers at home that say we fudging on the man. <laughs> four thirty. <coughs> and how many loads are you ran? Three. Three loads. Oh, uh -huh. that's twelve hundred and ninety dollars per day. Times five. Per day. Times five. Six thousand four hundred and fifty dollars. Now, how many total miles did we run? Two hundred twenty-two miles, right? Yeah, two twenty-two times five. So two twenty-two. Well, let's do the few. Let's do the few. All right. Divided by what? Five point six, right? No. Yeah. Times what? A dollar eighty or two eighty times yeah. two dollars times two dollars and eighty cents. That ain't right. Well, 
what was that, 222? That is right. That's for the whole week. Yeah, that's a, that's a full thing again for the whole week. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's how much money you spend on fuel um, for the whole week versus yeah. the money you spend on fuel down here. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. You got a dollar, you got 1,100 miles for the week. Hey, you got 1,100 miles for the week. Because you're running 222 miles a day. Yeah, 222 times 5. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 222, you're right. Times 5, I forgot to do that. You, you're all right. So you run 1,100. 1,100, 5.6. Yeah, so you run, yeah, so you run 1,110 miles off of the week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whole week. yeah, versus down here, you're running 900 miles per day. So the miles you're running uh, for the week down here is, if you're running, what, two loads, you're going to run two loads. So you're running basically 1,800 miles, right? 900 times 900, right? 1,800 miles, all right. But... I'm doing more per day than you are down here. Why? Because you only run the whistle. But all right. So we got 1,100 miles times. Divided by 5.6. Divided by 5.6 yeah. miles to the gallon. So you need 198 gallons. Right. Times the 2.8. 555 dollars for the whole week. A uh, week. That's for the whole week. Versus down here, you spend how much? Uh, the man, your mitch. What was it? Down here, you spend. It was like 1200 or something. Or yeah, you spend like 1200 some odd dollars, and you only ran, what, two loads? Right? So. Five to five. Now let's go back to the money, right? How much money we made for the for the um, each day here? Who's averaging what? Two twenty-two. Averaging two hundred twenty-two dollars per day. Twenty-two miles. Yeah, that's miles. I'm talking about the money. Money was uh, four thirty a day. Yeah, four thirty. We not out. I'm um, two hundred. All right. So let's go four thirty um, per, per day. So four thirty times five. Twenty one per day. That after fuel. Oh no, that before. No. Yeah. Minus what? Five. Five That's not right. That's not right. That's that's not right. All right, six thirty. No, four thirty. I don't think it's four thirty per day. It's four thirty times three per day. Yeah, four thirty times three per day. So that was your run. Three times a day. Twelve hundred. Yeah, the average run was four thirty. That's what that was. The average run was four thirty. So it was four thirty. Times three. So we were able to run three runs each day. There we go. Twelve ninety times five. There we go. Now, yeah, that, 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 that's where this number came from. Mm-hmm. Um, where's that? I think I had it on here before. That six. Th- yeah, that's right there. That's where that number came from. Sixty-four fifty. So you're making sixty-four fifty um, per week minus what? Five fifty-five mm-hmm. on your fuel. So his way, his way, running long runs. So five hundred eighty five thousand eight hundred and ninety five dollars off of the week running short runs, right? Right? And remember, we it, it, now remember we handicapped ourselves by two hundred bucks. Right. Right? Yep. Yep. We took off two hundred bucks. So we handicapped ourselves. Two hundred bucks a day. Yep. All right. So on our with our handicap, he is making what? A total of about I think he's making thirty eight hundred minus eleven hundred dollars for his fuel. 
He's making 38 his way, right? So, 5895 five, minus $38.50. So, <clears throat> man, that's another whole week check. <laughs> yeah, big difference. Y'all see why I love numbers? <laughs> yeah. Now, see, if you plan, look, if you plan this stuff out, now I'm not saying that you're going to hit that exact number every time running short runs, but you're going to make a whole lot more money running short runs uh, for the week that you are going to make running long runs. But it takes you longer to run a long run. You're going to spend more money on you, and it's going to take you three times as long. And you're, and you're going to be able to run two loads per week rather than type of runs. A 900-mile nine nine runs. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for all the operators that tell you, well, I'm losing time, but, and we kept them two hours all right. Now, <laughs> that... Is he really losing any more time? No. Because if you're doing what you're supposed to do, go in sleeper every time you go in, every time you pull up to a ship. Put in a sleeper. After the 10-hour break, let's go recap. Now, <laughs> if you run this right here, if you run loads like that, short runs, you got, and then, and then there's the stuff that money can account for. You got more downtime, right? You got more free time to do what you want to do, right? That goes towards what? Your quality of your living. What difference is it you to run these long runs and you ain't got time to do nothing other than lay down to sleep, get back up and drive? Right? Right. But if you're running them short runs, you got time to go catch a movie, go to the mall, go, you know, go to the gym, you know, <laughs> go to the big park. I mean, you can do all kind of stuff. So you have a better quality of life. You ain't got enough time and enough money to catch you a flight from home or wherever you want to go just to chill out for the weekend. You come back, get back to your truck, you refresh. You feel good, you had your nice little weekend vacation, and you still got plenty of money in your pocket. So, what's the verdict? Short runs or long runs? Short runs. Short runs every time. It's more money. More money, more money, more money. All right, everybody, I'm going to call it, we're going to call it that for the day. Uh, my blood sugar is creeping up. I've been trying to snack up these Doritos and this apple and this juice and juice I got, but I got to go get me some heat. <laughs> okay? But look, look, our goal every week is to help you all to, to learn something and help you all to... Uh, to, you know, to learn to think like an entrepreneur when it comes to this this industry. This back office site, all the stuff that we put in here. Now, here's a complaint that I get from some of these other freight broker trainers. Well, uh, uh, Cal, you know, you got all that stuff, but, you know, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, uh, by half that stuff, you didn't have to pay for it. I don't have to pay for it, but I have to do the research and put it all together. I had to do the due diligence to make sure that each thing um, that I put in here would serve a purpose that would be able to help my students and other dispatchers and all of our business managers to be able to use to figure out and solve the, all, of, all of the solutions and problems that they're facing. And I had to go to each one of them and, and, and determine the ones that can actually have the best chance of helping them to make money. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> we do pay a lot of money for some of the stuff that we have. I'm in our back office site. Okay. But if it was as easy as they said it was, my thing would be, why didn't you take the time to create, 
tools and resources and pull them all together and find out how they work and if they work and compile them in a manner where that people can just log in and access everything in, you know, in retrospect and how they need, need to do it to create business. Why didn't you do it? Then all of a sudden, I, you know, I get crickets. No, no, just ee, 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 ee. they ain't got nothing to say. You see what I'm saying? So, look. And, and not to mention being able to pull together using the Facebook chat, you know, uh, to, bring together, to bring our networks together, uh, create the back office site where we can keep track of all this stuff. Uh, Implementing a, 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 a business management type of invoicing system like Square that allows you all to be able to collect your money in a timely and professional manner and put together all the videos and stuff constantly that, <laughs> to, that y'all can fall back on to review stuff, uh, schedule the week the trainings and put the time and the effort in to do all the weekly trainings of, of, and throughout the week and just the knowledge to be able to answer questions that, Questions I'll let y'all come up with all week long. Do y'all realize how many questions that I I answered during the course of a week? Just in the course of this broadcast. Now I'm not saying that we're able to find answers to every question. But have y'all ever known me have y'all ever known me when you ask a question to say, Man, I don't know. <laughs> Good luck on that. <laughs> I've never had to say that. Because the times when you all don't see me, I'm always, always educating myself on the industry and problem solving. And look at sometimes I just sit around all day long and come up with different problems that owner operators might have, and I and then I go and look and find the answers for them. So when you all ask me a question, I don't have to wonder about what the answer is. I know what the answer is. Now, I may ask you all to come up with ideas to try and get you all to start thinking like that, but I already know the answer. I already know a solution to the problem. But it's not my... It, I wouldn't be doing you all a service if I just came off the top of the well. The answer up to that is this, or the answer to up to this is this. Where to find this is here. Where to go get this is here. Here, click on this, and I'll take you right to where. You, that's not. You know, I'm not teaching you anything. I'm not doing you any favors. I'm training you how to be lazy if I'm doing it that way. I want to train you all to think like I think. I want to train you all to look at stuff and see it the way I see it. I want to train you all to be. Innovative like I am, and if I can effectively do that, then I've done I've done my job. Cause then you have learned how to become a logistics entrepreneur in the truest sense of the word. And once you learn that, once you learn that, you will never ever 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 have to worry about how you're going to make money ever again. I don't worry about, you know, my wife and I, you know, we went out, you know, we buy a home, and, you know, I don't worry about how I'm going to pay for that home. I don't worry about how, you know, we afford, you know, to purchase whatever we, we need to purchase or whatever we need to, you know, to do it. I don't worry about my income going, dropping down, because I know my income is going to steadily increase. Month after month, year after year. Why? Because I've learned the skills and I've learned a different way of seeing things and how to look at things and how to do things that will continually, that will continually enable me to take advantage of opportunities that other people don't don't see. And I'm always going to be prepared to take advantage. If you get to that point, you're going to realize that, man, look, look here, this is how wealthy people Think, because they think differently. And I need y'all to start thinking differently. I really do. A lot of you have got it. You, a lot of y'all, you really, I mean, you got it, but you just haven't learned how to apply it. Some of you have gotten it and you've learned how to apply it, but you haven't acted on it. And there's a, there's a small portion of you, that group of you that are making, earning serious money, you learn um, that you've got it, you learn to apply it, and you have acted on it. 
And once you put all that together, then I mean, it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's this or whether it's something else in another industry or another field, you can always be successful at that. Why? Because you are looking at things from an entrepreneurial standpoint and you're looking at all the opportunities and you're able to and you're prepared to take advantage of all the opportunities. That's what it's all about. So, again, I appreciate you all. I thank you all for joining us. I look forward to seeing y'all back here this Monday. We won't be having orientation, but we had orientation last Monday. Um, and uh, this Tuesday was my mom's birthday, November 26th. Happy birthday to her. It's my mom's birthday. Uh, I got all these Sagittarius out of my life. My daughter's birthday is, yeah, my daughter's birthday is after that, December 14th. My wife's birthday is December 19th. So, <laughs> I got a lot of, you know, I'm planning to do. <laughs> uh, so, and we are uh, scheduled to close on the, on the house on December 19th, which is my wife's birthday. Um, and that was by design, but I wanted to give her a very good birthday present. But I appreciate each and every last one of you. I hope you all learned something new today. I hope you all learn something every time we get together. That's our goal. So I appreciate you all. And, uh, yeah. Thanks. Before you go, I got a quick question. Mm hmm. Have a good week. Well, what's going on next Saturday? Well, it's Thanksgiving weekend. All oh, probably, no. Probably not, because I'm probably not even going to be here. I'm probably going to be in my mom's place. I'm out of the country. I decided I would ask him. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, this coming Saturday, we will not be doing this because it's Thanksgiving. So y'all enjoy your Thanksgiving weekend. I will see you all after Thanksgiving because I'm, I'm going to go put on some more weight. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> So my mom, you know, she got 307 acres out there in the country, and, you know, they hunt them deer out there. They, she, got a, she, got, she got two freezers, I'm full of deer meat and wild boar, so y'all know what I'm going to be doing. So, it's getting back time. <laughs> All right. But now, but I appreciate that. Um, but uh, since I won't be seeing you all next week, happy Thanksgiving. Okay? Enjoy your Thanksgiving weekend. Um, 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 this Thursday, uh, this Wednesday night, we won't be having uh, orientation on Monday because we had it last week. I'm still planning on having Tuesday night spot training. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of planning on that. I think my wife and I just got something we got to do Tuesday, but not Tuesday night. And then Wednesday Q and A, we'll probably still do that. So look for us on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. If, if any of that changes, I will let you all know. Uh, right through the chat, I'll put it out. Put out everybody, let everybody know. But uh, again, I appreciate each and every last one of you all. I thank you all. Um, you know, you all have helped make this platform a great, great success. Um, I've had I've had many people who have taken shots at us and and tried their best to undo what we have um, that's going on and tear down what we built. But it's only gotten stronger, and and I have you all to thank for that. I appreciate you all. Remember, you know, spread the word, talk to people about us, share it on Facebook, share it, share us on wherever you want to share us to, and let people know that you know this is a great network. This is a great platform. Um, we help each other. That's what we do. That's what we. That's what we do. That's what makes our platform great. This is the fact that we actually help each other. We don't just teach a class and then and then we train you loose. You know, you all have a place to come back to every single week, every single day. You all can log into the chat in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can ask someone a question, and if someone is there, willing, able, and ready to help you, and that's you all are doing that. Okay, you all are doing that. You all make those chat groups work. Because I, I, sometimes I just come into the chat group, and I just be sitting there watching them. Every now and then I jump in and say something. But I watch the chat rooms every day, and I see how you all are helping each other. I see what you all are doing. Okay, uh, you know I don't, you know I don't know what other um, 
groups are doing, which I do know they're doing. I do know I do know that they're just you know uh, giving out you know a class or or a course or something of that nature. Uh, don't mind all these people on Facebook. Got a lot of crazy people on Facebook now, as y'all can see. But <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm just get to our chat group real quick here to show y'all some of the stuff that's going on. Um, uh, here's our newest chat group on Facebook. We've got about 800, 800 plus members in it. It can all hold 1,500. Um, so we've got two active chat groups on Facebook and one within the back office site. One is full. Chat group, chat group number one is completely full. I uh, can't hold any more people, so it's maxed out at, at the 1,500. And the chat group number two is the one that m most of you all are, are in, which is this chat group right here. Um, and as you all can see, you all are always helping each other out. Um, here's someone that, that was asking about, you know, what companies you could um, lease your, your truck on to. And Mr. Washington put down here, you know, all these different companies where he's showing you what companies you can go in and lease your trucks on to and things of that nature. But it seems like every time someone asks a question on here, someone steps up. And then they give them an answer, or they help them out, or you all are teaming up, or you all are networking um, with, with each other. This one of our new members, Mr. Ronald Walker. Thank you for joining our, you know, you know our team and everything. But people are always, you all are always here, and you're always stepping up, and you're always helping each other out. And that is the true value of this platform: is the network. That is really the real valuable part of what we are. So we give away the training videos. We give that away. Go to YouTube, watch it for free. You know, you know anybody can. You got to dive for it. But not everyone has the advantage of networking the way that we do. And all the back office tools and resources the way that you all have. And being able to call up and schedule a private consultation and things of that nature. So keep that in mind. And I just want to let you all know that I appreciate it. Each and every last one of you all, you all are doing a great job, and I promise you, if you just <laughs> get that old eye trained to look at things like an entrepreneur, you'll see how things just start clicking. Because you all, because y'all already know this stuff makes you money. That's what I already know. You're you've been in or around the trucking industry. You see these trucks moving. You know that these. Guys make money on the loans. You know that when you book and break, they pay you. So you all know it makes money. It's just a matter of you all piecing together and gathering all your pieces up together to build and build and build. And then that's thing you know, you, you, you sit back one day and say, wow, where did all this come from? Bye, everybody. I'm gone. <laughs> Thank you all. Y'all have a good weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Y'all, too. Appreciate it. Appreciate all of you all.